Okay, we got a question on online. Is the UT1 still um, legal to use? Yes, it is. The manual is covered under uh, UT1 and UT2. They combine the manuals. So UT1 is absolutely legal to use. Okay, so we're going to cover the carburetor and the, um, the air filter cup and that right now. So let's look at, I can tell that this carburetor cup is an older style. Page nine in your manual. Page nine in your manual if you're following along in your manual. Technically, see the carburetor cup has these little sleeves on there on both sides and then the cup comes off. There's uh, no gasket between the cup. Okay, so I'd like to measure the cup. This is an old style cup and I'm gonna show you the difference. Where's the caliper? This is a new style cup. See how it has the built-in boss in the cup? It does not make this illegal. It's just an older style. A lot of people machine the boss in the cup. Now I can tell right now that the red cup is deeper than the silver cup, but they have a diagram in the book and we're gonna look at uh, measuring the cup. Now, the first thing in there, John, you could tell me it tells you the, um, the width of this stud. It says if using let's see, bosses, maximum diameter of the boss is 515. Maximum diameter. Doesn't give you a minimum. Okay, so we're at 380. So we're fine. Now we're going to go to the diameter of the cup. What's the diameter or the thickness? Oh, the ID. No, oh, that's ID. I wanted the thickness. Flange thickness. What flange are they talking about? Right there. Oh, yeah. What? Give me that number. One three seven zero. They're saying this should be one three seven zero. This is one 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 seven zero. So this is quite a bit undersized from the picture that they're showing, but I don't know if they're calling out that even as yeah. a dimension. The, the width is right here, 1.370. But do they call it out? I, I, think it, I think that's what they changed it to here at 1.380. You know, guys, we've been doing this a long time, and sometimes these books stump us because there's conflicting information in the, in the manual. Okay, the red one is measuring 1374. Yeah, that was the old dimension in the book. The maximum is 0.138 now. It oh, used okay, to be so it's maximum. maximum. So this is legal. This is also legal, and it's shorter. I don't know that that would help you in any kind of performance gain. We're just measuring the parts as, as we see it in the, in the book. Now it says the inside doesn't give us an inside dimension here. Yeah, 1.050. So ours our red one measures 1.052. But it's saying the minimum is one inch. Okay, minimum. So that passes. This opening is much larger. And at 1207, and that one passes as well. Now it's giving 
the inside of the cup. 2.250 inside diameter. 2.250, this is 2.241, that's good. Hold on, hold on, and then they give out two other numbers in here, 2.180. But they're not calling them out down there. I mean, there's a lot of dimensions on this thing. If you had to machine this thing, you would need all those dimensions, but. Yeah, but they're conflicting information. A, they're calling out 2.250 right here, and then up here they call out 2.235, and then over here, 2.180. So again, there's a lot of conflicting numbers yeah, in the book. They're giving you a lot of room for the maximum, but again, I'm not sure making this 30 thousandths bigger is really gonna help you anywhere. And we're, we're looking for something that's out of spec, and we have not found anything out of spec on these two cups. Okay, the last thing is this number in red here, they changed to 30 thousandths, from 10 thousandths to 30 thousandths. The so they're talking radius. about the radius right here on the edge of the part. Um, this one pretty much has no radius and this one probably has 30 thousandths radius, which that's not gonna help or hurt you. Hard to measure that too, but yeah, they changed a radius, it. Right, a radius is very difficult to, to measure. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to the carburetor. Okay, before I touch anything on the carburetor, are you in the carburetor section? I think so. Is that page 10? Anybody now this is a this is a page 10 on the carb. This is a junior carburetor. At first I want to do a physical inspection and look at it. I mean this thing is dirty and gross, but other than that, it it looks fine. They call out in the manual. Um, the only thing that can be modified in this carburetor is they call it out by the black plastic piece. Have you found that in the book? Somebody help me. Black I'm plastic. Page, uh, nine in the old book. Um, so what this black plastic piece does is it controls the butterfly. How far it opens right here or closes okay. can you can you give me that so i can read that it just says no that's the insulator i need the carburetor oh we'll be back after passing the book so it says that you can modify this black plastic piece but it doesn't tell you why you're modifying it or what the point of that is but I already can tell you what the point of that is the point is that when you look in the carburetor right here you can see the butterfly and the butterfly is not fully open it's off by probably about 20 degrees so if you filed on the black plastic piece right here, you could get that butterfly to open to center. And that's gonna put a little more air through the carburetor. So that's really, that's the only modification you can do to this carburetor. Now I'm looking for my tech tools, which I'm gonna grab yeah, over I here. Have them right here, right here, right here, James. It might be in this tool. Okay, what did it say on the black plastic piece so we're we all clear? We never found it. Okay, so we're clear as mud on that. It I says know. it in there, I know it says it. In the old rule book. See, the rules, you have to read the rules line by line, word by word, and make your notes. Because when you go back to look at them, there's so many rules in here, it's really hard to find some of that stuff. Just move on. I'll look for it. Okay, we're going to move on.
to the Venturi opening. Can you give me a dimension for that? That is this opening in the center of the carburetor with the emulsion tube sticking through the carburetor. There's a dimension for that. The Venturi bore is 0.456 no bill. Yeah, but there's one with the emulsion tube. This little tool is flattened off right on the end so that if the emulsion tube is too low, this tool will fit through the carburetor. And right now I'm slipping it in and I'm wiggling it around and it does not go in the carburetor. Now, when you use a gauge like this, you don't jam it in there and wiggle it and, you know, force it into the hole because this is a very fine measurement and this gauge is made right to the dimensions in the book. And I've seen tech guys force this in there. It's a delicate tool. If it slips in, it slips in. If it doesn't, it doesn't. This does not go in. Which is important because if it went in at the track, that's a DQ. Should be 429 gauge. 429 gauge. 429 no go. And this is 429.5. So they're giving you a half a thou on that tool to go into that carburetor. So if you've messed with that Venturi, if you mess with that opening in the carburetor, you're busted because this is going to slip right in and then you're DQ'd. So, and that's a really easy tech. And that's an easy tech. This is, this is one that I would expect them to do. You don't even have to take the carburetor off the engine to do, to do this tech. Okay, so now we're going to move on. I don't know if there's fuel in here. So this bottom screw takes the bowl off. This other screw is the drain to drain your fuel out. But they put the drain a little higher than the bottom, so there's always a little bit of fuel that comes out of it. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to take the jet out that's right in the middle. Okay. What does it say about the jet? Usually it's a non-tech. I'm going to find it, but there's lots of rules in here. Kids racing, 30 page plus manual. Says the main Whoa. jet specification refer to the main jet primary small sample. Other main jet. So now I've been in tech before where they, since the jet is a non-tech, you used to say you had to use a Honda jet. What does it say now? OEM. It's, main jets will be compared to an OEM factory main jet. Okay, so you have to use a Honda jet. The hole in the middle is supplying the fuel at full throttle operation. Now the only way to lean this engine out or to richen this engine up at full throttle operation is to change the hole size in that jet. Which you can drill it to any size in the manual. Which it says you can drill this to any size in the manual. I, I don't recommend just drilling this open big, thinking that you're gonna pick up big power gains because you're gonna richen the motor up and that's not gonna give you more power. But I do wanna, I do wanna pin that hole just so I can show you how you measure it. Okay. 
Okay, so these are pin gauges, and if I drop this on the floor, it's going to make a hell of a mess. And they're all, they're all labeled in thousands. I'm usually very careful with this box because if you drop it, now you got to measure every single one of these pins and figure out where they go back in the box. So I'm going to guess 30. Guess 28. 26. So we got 26 to go. It's got a 26 jet in it. That's pretty small. I wouldn't I wouldn't think, well, this is a um this is the smaller carb. That's a junior carb. Okay. Now so 26 is probably right. I would have to go over to my notes and look. I have all the jets and the size written down. And we ran heavy, so I don't, I'm not that fluent with the junior carb. But I will tell you something. If you take this jet out of that engine, you're not allowed to in tech. But I don't, I don't know why. I don't know why they don't do this. If you find 26, if you find a 40 hole in there, Okay, and somebody's fast, that means that they're either juicing the fuel or adding an additive to the fuel because the engine will like more fuel the hotter the fuel spark is. But on regular gasoline, if you drill this to a 40 and run it, it's going to be a slow turd. And if you don't believe me, try it. You know, I tried every single, I have jets of every single size. And I would try them, and then I would settle on a number, and I would run one below or one above, depending if it was hot or if it was cold out. Okay, so that's the jet. And this is a brass jet, so that's a, 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 a stock jet, and it has a number printed right on there, so you know what the original jet was. You can buy these from NR Racing. Um, they've always been really good to me over there. And you can buy them in every different size, and... Um, it's worth poking around on one of these websites to look at everything that there is. Okay, now we're going to take the emulsion tube out. You got to find me the emulsion tube to dive in. So the emulsion tube has a hole right down the center of it. That's what's feeding off of this main jet. So the main jet butts up to the emulsion tube, the air, the fuel and air get mixed with these little holes on the side, and that's what creates your mist, if you will, in the carburetor for the car to run. It's supposed to have 10 holes in it. Okay, so we're going to look at this, and we have, and the holes are small. We have one, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. That sounds about right. Eighteen. It's a junior. One of these is listed. Junior How many holes does it say? It gives you a range, I thought. Oh, it says one twenty ten holes. 160, 12 holes, 160 UT2, 16 holes. Let me count them again, because see, now we just find, found another discrepancy in the book. Maybe we better check the old manual. <clears throat> and the carb number. 120 is 10 holes. Let's check. See, when we find a discrepancy, now we're going to backtrack to see why we have that. If you can find me the carburetor number. Carburetor number. Here's the old manual. I thought, that, I thought it says 99 something for the carburetor off the top of my head. 99L. Is the, it does, now read it in its entirety to me. 
Well, this is the old manual. I haven't found it in the new manual. Page 15 of the old manual says Junior Honda and Senior Honda. Okay, I need it out of the new manual. Honda 120 UT3 carburetor for Junior and Senior Honda classes, 99L only. Yeah. Okay, so it's a 99L only. This is a 60B. B. DQ. We should have checked that right off the bat, but I forgot. You know, I don't do this every day. So this is the wrong carburetor. Let me go get the right carburetor. Oh. Is that DQ number four? Mm -hmm. It is. What was the number on that carburetor? I don't even know where that's located. I don't do this. It's not down here. Six zero B. Yeah. Okay, so I got this carburetor, um, which I know is a brand new 120 carburetor. It hasn't been made into a quarter midget carb yet, because in a quarter midget you take the choke out, and then you seal that top, that top hole right there with some sealer. This number is 99L. Is that the number we're looking for? That is the number you're looking for. So this, this is the only legal carburetor which comes on a brand new UT3. If you use your carburetor off your UT2 or your UT1, you, you can't do it. it. It'll come up illegal. So let's just keep going with this carb. So this motor has been DQ'd four times already. Most easy mistakes too. And it's yeah, all easy. yeah, it's all easy mistakes. Like you don't know, you you say, hey, my carburetor's all gunked up, and somebody says, hey, I got one of those in my trailer. Here you go, you can use it. And you put it on there. You don't look at the number because you don't know all the numbers. And then you're DQ'd. But I mean, in essence, the carburetor looks. The same as the brand new one, so I don't know why they're they're outlawing it. There may be something different. We don't know. There may be something different. I mean, you'd have to inspect the thing for eight hours to figure it out, and we don't have eight hours. So let's just move on. How about the length of the emulsion tube? Yeah, the length of the emulsion tube is a big deal. What are they calling out for a length? Anybody page number? Uh, they are calling out 1.072 for a maximum length. 1.072. And this is 1.069. So it's a little short by two thousandths. The minimum is 1.058. Oh, okay, so we have a minimum. 1.058, it's 1.068. So this emulsion tube, the length of it is legal. And that's really like... 10,000? If it was me, I'd want this emulsion tube to be at that minimum length because the emulsion tube, but it's a tricky game. Because the emulsion tube sticks through this carburetor. I need something small to hold it. If you can see that, the emulsion tube is sticking through the carburetor hole. So the more air you can get through the carburetor, The more air you can get through the carburetor, the better. So you may not think that 10 thousandths matters. It does. If you add up all these things, they're worth something. Okay, now we're going to check the Venturi with our go, no-go gauge. 456, no-go. 
So the red says 456, no. And it does not go. When you stick it in there, it does not go. Again, this is a steel ground pin to 456. Okay, now, if somebody went, oops, and dropped the gauge, you're done. Because now you have put a dent on the end of the gauge, and the gauge will never, it will never read right again. Now on the go side, we're at 454. If I am going to drop it, I want it a shorter distance. <laughs> okay, now we're going to check that. And if you wiggle it, it goes. So it's that fine of a two thousandths of a measurement. So again, this is an easy tech item, but they have to take the bowl off and take the emulsion tube out to check that dimension. Easy tech though. E easy tech. Okay, so the next one I want to touch on is the pilot jet, which you have to take out the idle screw. And then if you pop up on the plastic jet, okay, this jet usually it has a brass thing pressed into the end of it. What's that dimension you're calling? 13 thousandths? Uh, 15. 15, give me a 15 pin gauge. Again, the only way to check that hole is with one of these pin gauges. What's the dimension? 15, no. 15, no. Okay, and the 15 does not go in. If you could see that little hole right there, give me a smaller gauge so I can show them that it goes in. The 15 will not go. What was that one? That's a 13. That's a 13. The 13 goes. So what that, what that hole in the bottom of that jet is doing, that is controlling your idle circuit or your low speed circuit. So if you open up that hole, you're going to have more fuel at idle. But these engines don't want any more fuel at idle. Do you want to check the bigger hole? There's a dimension for that. Okay, and then there's a dimension for this bigger hole in here. It's 52 no-go. 52 no-go. Pilot air jet. No, I think that's talking about the one in the carburetor here. Okay. Still goes. See, part of the problem in the manual is you've got to study this manual on every page. Let's see, pilot air jet. 052. Fifty-two is going. I know. Yeah, put a on that. Oh, it could be the bottom. Could be the bottom. Yep, that's probably it. No, because that was the fifteen number. Oh. Okay. Yeah. All right, we're not sure what that number is. Open this big box, because sometimes if you put a pin gauge in there, I've always seen that hole be big. We're in our second hour of tech, four DQs, so you can see how long this takes. Now if we're doing this at one o'clock in the morning and you got four or five motors to do, you could be there all night. The other word I'll say is if they do it to your motor, they should do it to everyone's in your class. If they, if they DQ you and you're the first place car and the second place car, and they, they, are, they should be checking the same thing on the second place car. And one time at the track, they did a full teardown on our motor, 
And I said to the tech guy, it took you two hours. If we do the other three cars in the class, we're going to be here till 5.30 in the morning. And we did not receive any DQ, and our motor was tore down four times that season. But we stayed there till 4.30 in the morning because I made sure that they did everything to theirs that they did to ours. Okay, so that center hole in that pilot jet is measuring 91. Do you see a 91 on there? Yeah, that's what the is main that? jet access passage. That's the main that's, jet, which is this one. Yep. I don't see any. So we can't find the dimension for this hole right there. I know they call it out, but the more important hole is the one in through the bottom. So we'll leave it at that. Again, when you're doing tech, when I did tech, in my head I would pick four items. And I would stick to those four items because we're showing you this can be a witch hunt. We can go for hours on this thing. But if you pick, let's say you're the tech director at the track and you say, okay, I'm just going to check carburetor. Let's just say you're going to check the length of the emulsion tube and the hole in the middle of it. And that's all you're doing for tech. Then it's the same for everybody on to next week. But when you go on these witch hunts, you know, or you say, oh, I'm going to check timing. Well, timing's fine, but just stick to the timing. Okay, what are we moving on to? Okay, so we can put, the, if you look in the manual, it calls out and has an arrow for every one of these holes in the carburetor. And one time when we were in tech, they checked every single hole and um, nothing came out of spec. And it won't if you have a stock carburetor. Okay, just talk a second on the rip gasket. So the other big thing is, okay, this carburetor is bolted to this um, insulator and it has a gasket, okay? <laughs> it's important when you take the carburetor off because this gasket right here, this gasket is sealing the carburetor to the black plastic thing. Now, let's say I want a little more air in this engine, okay? Oh, geez, I ripped the gasket getting it off. How did I do that? And I ripped this little chunk out. Oopsie, oopsie. And then I put that gasket back in and put the carb on there. All right, you don't have to put the carb back in. Nobody's the wiser. I mean, they go, oh, look, your gasket's ripped. But you're also sucking air. Another simple test. Ether. And yeah, and that's another simple one. When the whole engine's done, you know, the, a fast tech, when the carb's all done, you say start up the engine and you spray ether around around this area. When it sucks the ether, brake, brake fluid, uh, brake clean, um, starting fluid, starting fluid, anything, and you see the engine rise or fall, you know it's sucking air. And that's a, a, a quick, easy tech. That's a quick DQ test. Yeah. So now on this um, insulator, okay, there's a gasket behind there too, which is in good shape. Now the insulator, that's all it does. It doesn't call out any dimensions. It just says compare, compare to nothing and nowhere because, I mean, what are you going to compare it to unless you have an original one? Page number, anybody? So this is a tapered, tapered, tapered hole, page eight. But the carburetor hole is so much smaller than that hole. Even if you hog this out, I, I really don't see you gaining anything because it has to go through the carburetor first. I've never tried it. Got a legal part number. So they give you a legal part number and they show you a picture in the book and this one looks just like the the one in the book so we're gonna go with that's good 
Okay, so I'm going to take all these card parts and eventually we've got to put this back together. Are we moving on to a different area? Yeah, we're going to move on to this. Okay, let's cut for 30 seconds. We'll clean up and we'll be back at it 30 seconds later. The next topic is cylinder head.